So email intelligence, what does this mean exactly? I'll give you some statistics. Roughly every minute globally, there's 187 million emails. <coughs> so we're going to talk about a use case here specifically, uh, an operations example for trading. So there's millions of trade discrepancies every day, right? These need to be resolved as soon as possible. So if you look at this and imagine somebody's inbox, you've got a rapid succession of emails coming in. What's the problem with this? Well, the problem is they typically will have a client that has actually written you five times. By the time you finally get that email, you can imagine they're a little bit upset. Well, what if we can actually make sure that we not only are able to understand the email, we're able to route the email, email we're possibly able to action the email, but the main thing is that we can prioritize it. What do we do? We take the email, we break it apart. Now, you've already seen the document digitization. It's the same process. You take an attachment, you understand the content of that, and you extract those entities. But we also take the body of the email, and we understand things within that. So what exactly means to understand the text? What the human will, being will do is the first thing is we'll understand what are the substantives, the quantities, the concepts that are, are there. And if you read them in a sequential process, you will make the syntactic relations in the phrase, so then you will have to, you will convey sense of that. But the, here, in these short communications are other traits, one of the most important things are the entities, and then the relations that you are establishing between them to have sense. How we actually do that? Well, this has been the magic of the latest development when we have had the democratization of deep learning. What we see here is a really a representation of a thing that you all of you have. This is human language. What we see here are words. Words that they have meaning because they are stitched together in the distance how we use it. So by processing all the millions of documents, we have to try what are the difference, the distance between words. It is called word embedding. So once we've understood that email, what can you do with it? Well, in this situation, it's the idea that you've got this query coming in. We actually resolve the issue by looking up in the database. You've extracted the entities from that email. You understand the data associated. You find the associated trade in your trade data store. And then you match it. And then you can actually then auto respond to it. Right? You can manage that, auto-generate that email because you've already got the appropriate information. You can send it back and nobody's been involved, right? Hands off. Well, we then use that information to route the email. You understand the content of it. You can then route the email to the right person and make sure it's addressed in a priority fashion. What you're looking at right now is something called an ROC curve. The reason we use these is AI systems are not completely magic. Right? They're a decision system, an expert system. They, we typically design them to mimic human behavior. What you're seeing here is that the ability of the system to actually, uh, in this situation, classify. Right? And so as that curve increases, it's actually showing that the system's learning. Right? It's understanding more of the data space and it's learning. And the ideal is to get it up to the top left corner. But why it's possible is because we're using open source technology. The Google platform, TensorFlow, they allow us to tune this, right? It's not a closed system. We're able to affect it. This is not the end of the history, the, the story, because this is also the beginning in the sense that when you have classifier in email, in life, things, they don't have only one clear cut meaning. The algorithm will catch that. So then you say, OK, can I have multiple intent and then to start to build some more elaborated logic or even to put another machine learning system there that will learn? In fact, this is what is called a chatbot. Can I really make innovation by combination and put it, for example, things like sentiment analysis? It's not to take literally. We know that sentiment analysis has a lot of noise, as humans do, by the way. You have to remember how you, sometimes it's difficult to understand the humor of your colleague. But Putting them together, this gives you signals, signals that are your increasing your accuracy, that are increasing your usability. And for, of course, then you can scale this down, making recursive, not only the mail, what information I can extract from the attachments, and how can I combine this information to yield new insights in an endless loop. This is, in fact, the value of such platforms. You know, what volume of your emails typically are single intent? single attachment. So it's a complexity issue. 
Let's start off with solving the problem in bulk, right? We're practical. From a business point of view, you want to try and address as many, use and many samples as possible with your use case. But the point is, as Tony said, we are now able to move towards understanding multiple intent, multiple attachment. So what are the benefits of this? Well, we're able to, Tony's already mentioned this, we're able to handle uh, high volumes. It's more accurate, the understanding of the email. I would actually challenge that most of us, I don't know about you, my first line in the email is about as much as I get past nowadays. It gives me an idea of what's going on if you haven't caught me in the first line. But the, the AI is not going to do that. It's going to understand the content of that e email in full. So in fact, what we'll have to do in the, from a business point of view is that you will be able to handle high volume you will be able to do this more accurately. And of course, one of the main is that you will be able to extract insight. This is what is called intelligent augmentation.